All right, so you are welcome to this uh, presentation. And in today's video, it's going to be a very simple presentation focusing on troubleshooting Nyesinya in Kali Linux. And so if you don't know what Nyesinya is or what it's used for, um, I'm going to show you what it's all about. So Nyesinya is a framework for performing layer two attacks. And when we talk about layer two, we're talking about uh, the layer two of the OSI model where we have our switches operating and we have a couple of layer two protocols that can be tested using this tool Nyesinya. Okay, so if you look here, it says it's designed to take advantage of some weaknesses in different network protocols, right? Uh, so protocols like spanning tree, uh, STP, spanning tree protocol, Cisco discovery protocol, CDP, Dynamic Trunking Protocol, DTP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, like your DSCP server, you could perform DSCP starvation attack and the likes. Um, other protocols that could be tested with this tool is a host and buy router protocol, 802.1Q, 802.1X, the inter-switch link protocol from Cisco, and then the VLAN attacks, like VLAN Trunking Protocol. All right, so if you've got a network at home, you could actually test your switches, and especially if you have all these technologies enabled and configured, it could test for vulnerabilities within your Cisco switches that you've got in your house. Okay, so that's why this tool is very, very important. And so this tool for the past few months has not been working in Kali, right? So you'll install the tool, but then when you want to launch it, you're going to see an error. So I've been researching and Googling and trying to see if I can get a solution to this problem on the net. And luckily for me, I stumbled on golinuxcloud.com. The owner of this site actually writes so many uh, blogs on so many topics like coding, Linux, DevOps, and database, etc. And so he also come up with a documentation on how to fix the Nyesinya issue in Kali Linux. As a matter of fact, this is the particular documentation and I followed this documentation step by step and that was a fix to my Nyesinya issue in Kali. And so I feel like there could be some other people that also have issues and they have not discovered this particular post and they are not able to solve the Nyesinya issue that they have um, in their own Kali Linux in order to use that tool to perform testing within their internal network. And so I decided to make this video. All right, so let's get into the Kali real quick and see what we need to do to fix that issue. Uh, just so you know, if you get into your Kali and try to install the tool, uh, just run up, get install Nyesinya, and you could see telling me that I'm already having the newest version of this tool. By the way, I'm using Kali Linux 2024.2. So if I do LSB underscore release dash A, you see that I'm using 2024.2, uh, which about the latest version of Kali Linux. And so now that is telling us that the tool has been installed, and uh, as a matter of fact, we're having the newest version of this tool. Uh, let's try to launch it. So if I do Control L to clear my screen, and we'll launch it with the command Nyesinya dash G, and this has always been the problem. So it's going to say, it seems that you don't have GTK support on Nyesinya has been configured with disabled GTK options. Go and get it. <laughs> so I've searched everywhere on the net for the past few months and uh, no fix for this particular problem. All right. So uh, this is actually how to fix it based on the documentation on the go Linux cloud.com. And so let's follow the documentation. So what I'm going to actually do is to purge that device. Um, uh, that's in a senior, I'm going to remove it. So and we're going to install it properly. So I'm going to once again clear my screen, control L and uh, control shift V to paste. So I'm going to remove that in a senior because already I've installed it and it's not working. And let's get this guy um, 
uninstalled, all right? And then we'll go ahead and purge it from the machine. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to copy this second command. Uh, if we have not installed it already, then you don't need to do all these steps. Okay. So, and uh, we're going to purge that guy. All right. And now we're going to clone this from GitHub. All right. So we're going to clone it from GitHub and we're going to say git clone. And then we'll point to the uh, URL and then uh, try to clone it. And we're actually going to put it in a directory, which is the optional directory inside our Kali. So um, we'll go to the optional directory and then we'll install Nyesia in that directory. All right. So let's do that. Let's clone it. All right. So the cloning is done. And then we need to install the auto config. Uh, this actually is going to install the dependency files that we need in order to get the GTK module. Okay, so we're going to install this. Uh, hopefully, we won't get any error messages. And at the end of that installation, we have to navigate to the CD optional directory. And then our NAC here, and we're going to run a package there, uh, which is autogen.sh. Okay, so once the installation is done, we're going to navigate to that directory that the NAC is installed. All right, so the installation oof, is just 6% done, and so the waiting game starts here. So we we'll have to hang on and wait for this installation to complete. Okay, so finally the installation is complete and let's see the into the directory, uh, which is the optional location. And uh, now that we are inside that directory, let's list the contents. I'll just type ls. And you could see that we have a couple of uh, files in here but the one that is interesting us is uh, the autogen.sh and we're going to run that guy using the command dot forward slash to run it. Okay, so here I'm going to just uh, put dot forward slash uh, autogen. Uh, there's actually is a comma. So dot forward slash and then you could actually copy this guy and paste. So this is the file that we are interested in. So I'm going to paste it real quick and hit the enter key. And hopefully we do not uh, get any errors and the file will go ahead and run successfully. And once that file is completed, then we'll go ahead and configure the GTK. And the GTK is going to enable us to use the graphical user interface of Unisenia. So we're going to run dot four slash configure, and then we'll use the dash dash with GTK option. Okay. So that's the command. And we're trying to get the GTK, which will allow us to do that command in Yesenia dash capital letter G, which is telling the Yesenia that we want to launch the graphical user interface version of the tool. All right, successfully loaded. Use GTK is now set to yes. All right. And that actually is a good news. So the next thing we need to do now is to make this file okay so we're going to make it so i'm going to just say make and after that we do make install right okay so let's wait for the make command to be completed and we're going to make install 
and now that the make command is successfully run so we're going to do make install all right and i think that the new senior is set up and um, to launch it once again let me clear my screen Control l and i can now type new senior and think uh, there is a typo there uh, what's going on you see here the g hopefully it should be launched so click on ok to acknowledge it and it seems to have issues with my network interface okay so the default interface is eth0 all right so no issues uh, that actually is my default interface. I'm using the ETH0. So if I want to confirm that, I'll go to edit connection. Um, you see that I'm using wired connection. So if you open up that guy, you're going to see that I'm using ETH0. So it's telling me that that is the port that the new senior is going to be using. And uh, that is fine by me. And in here, you could see that we can launch attack. And there are different types of attack that could be launched here. Uh, this is the Cisco discovery protocol. And we can also perform DCP starvation attack. And uh, there is 802.1Q, the IEEE 802.1X, the dynamic trunking protocol. And this is host and by router protocol, inter-switch link from Cisco. This is multi-protocol level switching, MPLS. There is panning tree protocol attack. And you could see a variety of options that we have here. You can claim the role of the root bridge. And then there is VTP, which allows us to delete some VLANs on your switch. Um, delete one VLAN or delete all VTP VLANs. Uh, you can add a VLAN. All right. So those are the layer 2 protocols that could be exploited if they are misconfigured using this particular tool all right so this how to get you see you're working and i hope uh, this is going to be helpful especially if you've been having similar issue uh, you've installed the tool but you are not able to make use of it you can launch it so you can go ahead and follow the steps that i showed in this video and then get that working all right so i'm going to display all the commands uh, that i use here in the description of this video thank you so very much for watching if you have found value for this particular tutorial kindly subscribe to the channel and also don't forget to click on the like button so that when other videos like this are released you'll be notified see you in my next video bye for now